February 12th, 2024, Canada, baby! Okay, we got a lot to go over, okay, but I'm going to try to keep it short, okay? Uh, I knew I knew an old guy that used to say, uh, take it easy, Greasy, you got a long way to slide, okay, guys? All right, uh, okay, we're going to go over 10 City Weather Report. And uh, briefly over the Putin uh, interview, okay? So, 10 City Weather Report. Uh, well, uh, Friday was like Los Angeles temperatures here, and uh, today she's pretty chilly out, okay? All right, 10 City Weather Report is done. Okay, all right. First off, I don't want to offend anybody, okay? That's never my intention. The only people I want to offend are the bull, Okay. Like our Justin Trudeau, Christian Friesland, okay? Um, uh, and I kind of think that Ukrainian president is a little shady. Little shady. I think he's worth watching, guys, okay? Just like Trudeau, okay? Just like Biden, okay? Just like Friesland, okay? Just like Sean Frazier, okay? Uh, all Canadians. Uh, yeah, so... I don't want to offend anybody. I know a lot of great uh, Ukrainians, and I know a lot of uh, Russians, okay? I don't know a lot. We don't always talk about where we're from, okay? But um, I don't want to offend anyone. I only want to offend um, the people in power, okay? The dinks, okay, guys? So I'm trying to make sense of this because uh, we're not getting our information, okay? That's, uh, that's apparent, okay? I'm sorry uh, ahead of time, okay, guys, because I'm, uh, l let me help you, okay? I'm just trying to help, okay? I come in peace, I, I come in peace, okay, guys? All right, can't stress that enough, okay? Not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, all right? Okay, so, um, I took notes, okay, and I've only got through half the interview, okay? But I got two sheets back to back, okay, guys? Because when I do a job, I do it right the first time, okay, guys? Uh, I don't take no shortcuts, so I'm really diving in and uh, investigating this, okay? Because I'm right now currently at 1 hour and 14 minutes of the interview, okay? What I got from it, uh, Putin talked a lot about uh, history of Russia, and it went on for about a half an hour. This you'll see, Okay. Then he got into the meat and taters of her, okay? And he talked about NATO, and he talked about uh, NATO is really shady, okay? And uh, Trump's comment over the weekend, Saturday, after the interview, said about how there was uh, a delinquent leader uh, that wasn't going to pay his bill, and Trump was like, no, we're not going to protect you, you're a delinquent. And I bet you that little delinquent was Trudeau. Hands up if you think that world leader that was a delinquent was Trudeau. Hands up. You know what? Putin wants to talk to people. He wants to negotiate this stuff. And as far as I'm surmising, guys, uh, there is something shady AF going on. And I don't know. I Putin might not be all that bad. I don't know. Watch the interview, guys. And I'm just saying, just saying, okay? Uh, just doing research, okay, and it's a discussion, dialogue, you know, Trudeau likes to, uh, likes to encourage that, right? Um, and then, uh, Ru uh, Putin had said, why is everyone so concerned about the Russian threat when China ha has 1.5 billion people, Russia only has 150 million, China has 1.5 billion people and the largest economy, okay, because we keep buying made in China, guys! Okay, start shopping local, guys, and uh, quit buying your stuff on uh, online, online. During this uh, interview, they laughed and Putin, like, insulted Tucker Carlson, or was assertive with him anyways, and I appreciated that, and so did Tucker. I, it's actually funny when they laugh. I just quickly this morning saw a BBC uh, um news thing about it, okay, and I only watched about two minutes of it, because all they did was knock how long and lengthy it was and how it seemed biased, okay, like the western news is not biased, okay, all right, okay, and where I'm at in the one hour, 14 minutes of it, um, they talked about how America, um, 
uh, owns a lot of these uh, uh, networks all across the world, okay? And I think Canada does too, especially our CBC, Global News, and uh, RCTV, but we're going to blame Bell Media, okay? Our this is going to be part one of the Russia uh, interview with Carl uh, Tucker Carlson, and uh, I don't know how long it's going to take me, but this is part one of it, okay? All right, guys, stay you, stay true, get to talking, and uh, true nor strong and free. Stay, stick around for the ending, because I got a little song for you, so okay? Vladimir Putin shot February 6, 2024, at about 7 p.m. in the building behind us, which is, of course, the Kremlin. The interview, as you will see if you watch it, is primarily about the war in progress, the war in Ukraine, how it started, what's happening, and most pressingly, how it might end. One note before you watch. At the beginning of the interview, we asked the most obvious question, which is, why did you do this? Did you feel a threat, an imminent physical threat? And that's your justification. And the answer we got shocked us. Putin went on for a very long time, probably half an hour, about the history of Russia he did. back to the 8th century. And honestly, we thought this was a filibustering technique and found it annoying and interrupted him several times. And he responded he was annoyed uh, by the interruption. But we concluded in the end, for what it's worth, that it was not a filibustering technique. There was no time limit on the interview. We ended it after more than two hours. Instead, what you're about to see seemed to us sincere, whether you agree with it or not. Vladimir Putin believes that Russia has a historic claim to parts of western Ukraine. So our opinion would be to view it in that light as a sincere expression of what he thinks. And with that, here it is. It's attack on our country. And to American ears, that sounds paranoid. Tell us why you believe the United States might strike Russia out of the blue. How did you conclude that? It's not that America, the United States, was going to launch a surprise strike on Russia. I didn't say that. Are we having a talk show or a serious conversation? <laughs> Here's the quote. Thank you. It's a formidable serious conversation. So if you don't mind, I will take only 30 seconds or one minute to give you a short reference to history for giving you a little historical background. Please. <coughs> Let's look where our relationship with Ukraine started from. Where did Ukraine come from? The Russian state started gathering itself as a centralized statehood, and it is considered to be the year of the establishment of the Russian state in 862. 862, he went on. People of Novgorod invited but it was interesting. Prince Rurik from what day is it? Western Ukraine. At the 920 mark. Are inventing things. See, 920. I'll give you these documents. Well, I, I, it doesn't sound like you're inventing it. I'm not sure why it's relevant to what happened two years ago. But still, these are documents from the archives, copies. Here are the letters from Bogdan Khmelnytsky, the man who then controlled the power in this part of the Russian lands that is now called Ukraine. He wrote to Warsaw demanding that their rights be upheld, and after being refused, he began to write letters to Moscow, asking to take them under the strong hand of the Moscow Tsar. There are copies of these documents. I will leave them for your good memory. There is a translation into Russian. You can translate it into English later. I would like to share a very interesting story with you. <laughs> I digress. It's a personal one. Somewhere in the early 80s, I went on a road trip in a car from then Leningrad on a road trip. across the Soviet Union through Kiev. Made a stop in Kiev and then went to western Ukraine. I went to the town of and all the names of towns and villages there were in Russian and in the language I did not understand, in Hungarian, in Russian and in Hungarian, not in Ukrainian, in Russian and in Hungarian. I was driving through some kind of village and there were men sitting next to the houses and they were wearing black three-piece suits and black cylinder hats. I asked, are they some kind of entertainers? 
I was told, no, they were not entertainers, they're Hungarians. I said, what are they doing here? What do you mean? This is their land, they live here. This was during the Soviet time in the 1980s. They preserved the Hungarian language, Hungarian names, and all their national costumes. They are Hungarians and they feel themselves to be Hungarians. And of course, when now there is an infringement. Well, that, that is, and there's a lot of that though. I think many nations are upset about Transylvania as well as you obviously know. But many nations feel frustrated by the redrawn borders of the wars of the 20th century and wars going back a thousand years, the ones that you mentioned. But the fact is that you didn't make this case in public until two years ago, February. And in the case that you made, which I read today, you, you explain at great length that you felt a physical threat from the West in NATO, including potentially a nuclear threat. And that's what got you to move. Is that a fair characterization of what you said? Я я понимаю, что мои длинные диалоги, диалоги, они I understand that my long speeches probably fall outside of the genre of the interview. That is why I asked you at the beginning, are we going to have a serious talk or a show? You said a serious talk. So bear with me. I love that. We're and you've mentioned this many times. I think it's a fair point, and many in America thought that relations between <clears throat> Russia and the United States would be fine with the collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War, that the opposite happened. But you've never explained why you think that happened, except to say that the West fears a strong Russia, but we have a strong China the West does not seem very afraid of. Uh, what about Russia do you think convinced policymakers they had to take it down? The West is afraid of strong China more than it fears a strong Russia, because Russia has 150 million people and China has 1.5 billion population, and its economy is growing by leaps and bounds, or 5% a year, it used to be even more. But that's enough for China. As Bismarck once put it, potentials are the most important. China's potential is enormous. It is the biggest economy in the world today in terms of purchasing power parity and the size of the economy. It has already overtaken the United States quite a long time ago, and it is growing at a rapid clip. And let's Canada. Let's not talk about who is afraid of whom. Let's not reason in such terms. And let's get into the fact that after 1991, when Russia expected that it would be welcomed into the brotherly family of civilized nations, nothing like this happened. The trick is, I don't mean you personally when I say you, of course, I'm talking about the United States. The promise was that NATO would not expand eastward. 